nurses didn't follow their training, the nurses are defending themselves, saying that they were improperly trained. That's something for you know epidemiologists to figure out. But the fact remains is that at some point they encountered body fluids from this patient, whether they knew it or not, and they weren't wearing the PPE for it. So practice. You already know how to take off gloves. That's easy as pie, right? Well, when was the last time you tested yourself with something fun? Go get some syrup, some spaghetti sauce, shaving cream, whipped cream, anything you want to use, Tabasco sauce. Put on your gloves, get your hands absolutely filthy with that, and try to take off those gloves without getting anything on yourself or your buddy that's helping you. Once you're good at that, and that will probably take a couple hours, but you know, you'll, you'll be surprised. You put chocolate syrup on that, you'll be surprised at where that stuff ends up. Once you get good at it, start pushing yourself. Because you know perfectly well, what, much better than I do, the kind of adrenaline that you will feel in an actual... You guys, you guys is for the group. In a for real situation, however, slow down and take your time. Get somebody to help. These are pictures of a drill taken at iFish where you guys were doing a radiation uh, uh, practice. You've got the procedures. Get someone to help you out, to observe, to help you go slowly. Decontaminate your PPE before you remove it. You guys want me to go back to slide or? No, we got it all here. So. And you, if you know you're transporting somebody, if somebody calls you and said, yes, this is definitely an Ebola victim, you've put me in a body bag for tra practice transport. Think about ways to protect your ambulance. Put them in a body bag. Put them in a disposable Tyvek suit if they truly are that contagious. If you know something's coming, you can protect your ambulance. Put tarps over the sensitive materials, put them all along the walls. You're just trying to, again, spatter is all you're trying to protect against. All right, so do I just live in this stuff forever? Because some poor person just made themselves a homemade hazmat suit. How do I kill it? How do I get rid of it? You have adequate materials in your house right now. That, um, you can use bleach, 10% bleach, it's a beautiful thing. Alcohol-based hand sanitizer. Soap and water, that's a good start. Check under your sink. I rummaged around here, you know, this stuff that you guys use, it's the, the Spirit 2 that you use here in the department, perfect. It's already available. You can use any EPA registered disinfectant or sterilant. If you look on the label, it'll say here, disinfectant, tuberculocidal, uh, viricide, mildew stat, fungicide, that's, that's all on this label. Check the label for what's printed on the label. If it says viricide, that's a good one. Um, again, you'll hear me talking about the names of things. These are not the only things you can use. These are, these are ones that I am familiar and comfortable with. There are hundreds, if not thousands, of fantastic uh, um, cleaning chemicals out there. Check the EPA registry. It's available online. I am told that Vercon is a very good disinfectant. It's used mostly in farms, surprisingly enough. And I'm told that it's very good on turnout gear. Uh, I like a compound called Red Z. It's a powder that you pour onto a liquid. It then releases chlorine and then turns into kind of a jello that's easy to scoop up. Again, hundreds and hundreds of others. If you don't have anything else, get a gallon jug of bleach. Go for it. But beware of this. 
It's going to start happening. The, uh, the spam emails have already come out. Use this herbal re remedy to protect yourself against Ebola. It's a spam. It's a scam. Just ignore the whole, hey buddy, want to buy a special disinfectant? You know, you have these disinfectants. You do not need to, um, to purchase anything special. And if somebody cr tries to come to you and says, it has been tested against Ebola and works, make them prove it by looking at the EPA registry because many people will lie about that. Uh, after the uh, anthrax attacks, many, many people tried to get their um, uh, disinfectant listed as able to kill anthrax spores and the EPA would not allow that to be on a label claim. I suspect the same thing will happen with Ebola. But again, if it says viricide, it's already good to go. When you're decutting your equipment, again, remember, just like always, clean it first, then disinfect it. In, your, in this case, you'll probably want to clean and disinfect and then re-disinfect. Um, anything for non-enveloped viruses, the adenovirus, norovirus, or poliovirus, those are all sturdier viruses than Ebola is. So if something says kills norovirus, kills poliovirus, it's good to use. Follow the instructions on the label. Just standing back and dumping the stuff isn't enough. You have to actually follow the instructions, particularly the contact time. If it says good on a clean surface, spray, wipe, done, then you're fine. If it says give it a 10 minute contact time, give it the 10 minute contact time. Heck, give it 11. You know, you don't need to spend all day, but get, make sure it gets the label registered contact time. And wear your PPE for the cleanup. When you spray something onto something else, you've all sprayed with a hose, it creates a spatter. That happens even with a little spray bottle like this. It's just that it's harder to see the splash and spatter. So wear some PPE. Why not protect yourself? You guys are the first responders. You will get the Ebola scares. You will get some parent calling you up saying, my child is vomiting and has a fever, and I just know he has Ebola because there's some kid in his classroom that has an African name. Well, you know, that poor kid in his classroom is a fifth generation American and has never been a farther away than Disney World, and by the way, he's not sick. But that panicked parent is going to call you for help. You're going to get somebody who doesn't like his boss and sends his boss a Tupperware bowl of vomit in the mail and says, this is, label, you know, this is coated with uh, Ebola. Somebody's going to do it. We all know that. And you guys are going to be the ones called to deal with it. And I'm sorry. I'm waiting. Fortunately, we don't live in a uh, college town. But I'm waiting for the bright boy to mix cherry syrup, Everclear, and syrup of Epicac and take it to a fraternity drinking party and bet his buddies a hundred bucks they can't swallow three shots of this without throwing up. And once again, you guys are the ones that are going to be called to some poor 19 year old who's throwing up everything he's eaten in the last two years and when you pat him on the shoulder and say, what's the matter son, he's going to choke up, I had Ebola. Well, great, it's a drink labeled Ebola, it's not the real thing, but you guys are still going to have to deal with it. Questions to ask these people. Have you been in Africa? Where in Africa? There's a lot of Africa. If somebody's been in Ethiopia or Somalia, they're nowhere near the Ebola outbreaks. If they've been in Niger, again, they, it's, it's good. If, they've, you know, if they say, yeah, I was just down in South Africa for the surfing, there's no outbreak there. Just because they've been in Africa doesn't mean they've been exposed to Ebola. Where? Which countries? Um, have you been around a sick person in the last month? Do you know what they had? These people over in the, uh, the stricken countries, they are being stigmatized. Nobody wants to be around an Ebola patient because then you can't get treatment. The people over there, the uh, hospitals are so overwhelmed, they cannot get treatment for measles. They cannot go to the hospitals to get their tuberculosis medications. They cannot go to the hospitals to give birth to their babies because of the Ebola scare. So they may not want to tell you if they've been around a sick person. Have you been around somebody who's sick? Do you know what they had? You know, if, if they say yes, by all means, use extra precautions. 
be prepared to deal with Uncle Buck here, who has read all about Ebola on the internet, and he knows how to solve all these problems. Yeah, you've all got an Uncle Buck. I can see that on your faces. But you know, it's you're going to have somebody standing over your shoulder telling you how to treat them. So questions. If you've got questions you don't want to ask out loud, please write them on the three by five cards and pass them into the middle because I don't want to leave and don't want anybody to leave with their questions unanswered. If I don't know the answer to your question, I will go look it up and get back to you. So what's the recovery process like? What do they do for the patients to help them? Mostly it's rehydration. Um, it, from what I've been reading, if someone is extremely ill, they tend to die within the first four days no matter what treatment they get. Other than that, it's supportive care. There are many countries that are working on developing medications and vaccines. Um, most of those, there's a, it's a very limited supply because until the last couple of months, it's been a third world disease that hasn't gotten a lot of attention. And Other it, questions? It can't be absorbed through intact skin, right? Not through intact skin, nope. Is there any, what's the testing procedure that people go through to say, yes, I do have Ebola, or no, I don't have Ebola? Uh, are you familiar with PCR assays? No. Polymerase chain reactions? They take a blood sample or possibly some other fluid sample, send it away to a laboratory. There are some laboratories that are certified for doing this, many others are not. And they do a test to see if the viral DNA is present, or sorry, yeah, RNA is present in this particular sample. Uh, if the virus is present, then the person is presumed to have it, and, and they continue on treatment from there. You've heard about the nurses that were released because their samples were negative.